Well, good morning. It's next to the last day of 2020. And let's say this has not been a great year. Not even really a good year in many ways. But it hasn't been a really bad year other than the 10 days I spent in the hospital with lymphedema. Uh, that was not a fun trip, I'll tell you. Don't ever want to do that again. But at any rate, uh, I'm not going to do a cooking video this time. This is going to be a story video more than anything else. Uh, as uh, all of you know, I was fired on my 50th birthday, which is the best thing that ever happened to me. And uh, I just did odd jobs after that. And one of the odd jobs I did was delivering airplanes. Started in about 1978 or 79. <clears throat> and continued for several years until the light airplane business went belly up uh, for reasons I won't even mention now. But. Uh, it was it was a good income and uh, I enjoyed it and but one of the problems I lived in Colorado and many of the trips that I took were to the west which is over the mountains now in 8,000 hours of flying I had never had an engine failure except on the first flight I made on my first solo flight. <laughs> Took off, the engine quit, I landed in a field just past the end of the airport there and uh, it was carburetor ice, but that's beside the point. But, uh, and I learned from that. But I've never had an engine failure, but if you had an engine failure over the mountains, you could probably find a place that was a survivable place to to end the flight in uh, but the problem would be you might be a long ways from any help and you need to do a little bit of surviving uh, uh, until help could get to you or you could get your work your way out and uh, in doing a little research, I found the most useful survival weapon or implement that you could have would be a good knife. So I started looking around for the ideal survival knife. Now, of course, there's boy knives and all that, but you, you can't carry one of those around in public. Uh, it had to be a pocket knife. So one day I was in this uh, sporting goods store and there was a buck knife display. And they had all different sizes of buck knives and everything and looking at them, up across the top was this one huge buck knife. And I thought that would be it. It folds, it goes in your pocket, it's bound to be a legal knife uh, and it would certainly be a usable item if you landed out someplace in the mountains and uh, you could do a lot of things with it. It was called the Explorer which was a proper name for it and here it is and it is a big knife way too big to carry in your pocket too heavy uh, but it would be an ideal knife and I talked to the man there and he says you really want to buy that big knife and I said yes and uh, so we negotiated a little on price and I bought it. And uh, it is a legal knife. It measures eight and a half inches total length. The blade 
the sharp part is three and an eighth inches which comes well under the three and a half inch limit and even from the uh, there it's still under the four inch limit uh, the handle on it is five inches long which is a good big grip handle and uh, it is it's sharp enough to shave now so I wouldn't have to carry it in my pocket I got this uh, little case here with a loop on it for my belt and it fit right in it. Uh, the case was originally for a Leatherman type tool but it worked fine for the knife. It was a legal knife in length. Uh, it was also a legal knife in uh, blade length and uh, The overall length of the knife was eight and a half inches. The blade itself from the handle was three and a half inches and from the knock was three and under a quarter which is the maximum length for a legal knife, folding knife, uh, three and a quarter inches. And uh, in airports in those days, they had a picture on the desk there, and you'd put the knife up against it up to this point here. And if the point didn't exceed that, it was a legal knife. Uh, I'd had a flight to uh, Casper, Wyoming, to deliver an airplane, and spent the night, and was flying out the next morning, and. Uh, got in line there to go out and the lady picked it up and uh, said and put it up there against the edge of the desk and it exceeded this and she says that's an illegal knife you can't take it aboard I said but if you back it up to what the picture shows there, it is legal. She said, well, I measured this way. And I said, well, you're doing it wrong. And she said, well, that's the way I do it. And I said, well, do it right and we'll, we'll be all right. And uh, she said, well, you'll have to put it in your baggage. And I said, okay. So I closed the knife and all the luggage I had was too aircraft charts and I laid on top and I laid on top of one and off the other and I, it's okay it's in my luggage now she said that's not gonna work and a voice behind me says are you pilot and I looked around and there stood the captain of the frontier airliner that I was going out on and the first officer and the flight attendant I said yes I am and he says lady let the man get on so we can leave and so she she really didn't let me on and of course that won't happen anymore uh, you you take this up in the uh, end of TSA and it, it goes into their box you'll never see it again and you argue with them and you'll be up against the wall there uh, they they don't argue the point. They they state their point and make it very plain, very markedly. But anyway, uh, I got on home and that was it. But it uh, I've carried it many 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 miles. Never had a need for it. And it's been 40 years now since I bought this, and I know I'll never have an occasion to use it again or carry it again, so I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do with this knife. I've got a son I could give it to, but uh, I know that he's a doctor. <laughs> I'm sure that he would never have need of it. 
but uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, but I'll figure that out. But I just wanted to tell you about my big buck knife. Uh, so, God bless America, God bless Texas, and you folks have a great day, and, and I hope you have a better year in 2021, and I hope I do. Bye.